Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for joining the Orange County Historical Museum tonight for Flag Etiquette, where we will learn how to properly display and fold a flag, as well as when and how to retire a flag. Please be aware that this session is being recorded. And for best viewing tonight, we do suggest that you choose active speaker view. Please keep your video and your microphone off throughout the program. Before we begin, we would like to say that the museum is currently in the middle of our friendship campaign, and we would love for you to join us as a friend. We'll put the link in the chat box for how you can do so. And we'd like to thank the following people who with additional donations have become our best friends. Bailey B Supply, PHE Inc, Leland Little Auctions, Rick Ashby State Farm, Hillsborough Orange County Chamber of Commerce, the town of Hillsborough, and the Alliance for Historic Hillsborough, the Chapel Hill Historical Society, the family of Henrietta and Glenn Allman, Kathy Young, the Giza Keys and Stephen T. Daniels, the Ostrands, the Brahmies, Gail Cooley, and Lauren Turner. Tonight, we are featuring Thomas Allen. Thomas is a 17-year-old rising senior in the Career and College Promise Program at Durham Tech. He is a life scout with Troop 438 in Hillsboro. Thomas is working on completing his Eagle Scout project, which involves constructing and installing a box here at the museum for the proper disposal of American flags. He enjoys participating in his scout troop and is the president of his youth council at his church. Thomas, we're looking forward to hearing from you about proper flag etiquette and a little bit more about Flag Day. Happy Flag Day, everybody. And I will turn it now, Thomas, over to you. Thank you, Ms. Day. Um, hello, everybody. And, uh, happy Flag Day. I am uh, really glad that you all could make it to this uh, presentation. Um, as Ms. Day said, it is part of my Eagle Scout project. So it's an incredibly important milestone. I have a video to show you all that details some of the ways we can dispose of the flag, fire the flag, um, fold the flag, uh, the history of the flag, and just how this holiday that we call Flag Day um, came to be. I think it will be uh, very informative and I'm excited to share it with you all. The American flag has long stood as a symbol of hope and freedom, both on our shores and abroad. Its bright colors have flown at all stages of our country's life, flying over both states and colonies as its time as our national emblem. It's only fitting, then, that a day be set aside in order to honor our beautiful star-spangled banner and the promises she stands for. Flag Day is a congressionally recognized holiday, celebrated on the 14th of June in the United States. It is celebrated on this day because on the 14th of June, 1777, the Continental Congress voted to accept the design of our first official national flag. The first calls for a holiday like Flag Day happened all the way back in 1861 in Hartford, Connecticut, where a newspaper by the name of the Evening Press proposed a national day of celebration on the flag's birthday. The next major push happened in 1885, when a Wisconsin schoolteacher by the name of Bernard J. Sigrand emphasized the importance of respect for the flag to his classes and recommended they celebrate the 14th of June as an occasion he called Flag Birthday. He followed this encouragement to his students with an essay published in a Chicago newspaper asking Americans to set aside June 14th as the day to formally honor the flag. Shortly after this publication, in 1888, the efforts for a National Flag Day began to be championed by arguably the most vocal and effective voice the holiday has ever had, William Kerr. At 20 years of age, Kerr founded the American Flag Day Association in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. 
He campaigned vehemently for a celebration of the flag's birthday for 69 years. And thankfully, his voice did not go unheard for long. In 1916, President Woodrow Wilson proclaimed June 14th to be National Flag Day, though it would not be recognized by Congress as such until 1949 under the Truman administration. And from there, many Americans began to celebrate in the way William Kerr and Bernard Sigrand had dreamed of earlier, giving us the Flag Day we know today. Interestingly enough, Although our legislative branch did establish the 14th as National Flag Day, it is not recognized as a federal holiday. This means that, although federal government offices and many schools and businesses close on Memorial Day, Labor Day, and other federal holidays, they remain open on Flag Day. However, Pennsylvania, William Kerr's home state, recognizes it as a state holiday meaning it provides a vacation for the majority of PA government employees. It's also customary for the president to give an address declaring the week of the 14th to be National Flag Week. The most recent of these proclamations was issued on June 10th, 2022, and is available on the White House's website. Our flag itself has a very rich and detailed history. Although not officially recognized by the Continental Congress, our first national flag is widely considered to be the Grand Union flag, which was displayed by George Washington on January 1st, 1776. Its design consisted of 13 alternating red and white stripes, combined with the 1606 British Union flag in the upper left corner. Notably, in this first design, the blue field and stars are absent. This is most likely because there still existed an amount of British sympathy in the colonies, and the Declaration of Independence had not yet been signed. Less than a year after our nation's birthday, on July 4th, 1777, Congress approved the design for a flag containing the familiar stars and stripes pattern that has been maintained to this day. Most Americans attribute the design for this first flag to New England seamstress Betsy Ross, though in recent years, some historians have instead given credit to Continental Congressman Francis Hopkinson, who designed a naval battle flag strikingly similar to the modern Star Spangled Banner, and even submitted a bill to the Congress for his work, though he was never paid. The Betsy Ross flag maintained the Grand Union flag's red and white stripes, but replaced the Union flag with a blue rectangle containing 13 stars in a circular design. In 1795, the circular pattern was done away with in favor of a rose and columns design for the stars. While today it has been established that, although the number of stars may change, the number of stripes remain 13, there was a time when a new stripe 2 was added for every new state in the Union. Interestingly enough, when Francis Scott Key wrote the now famous Star Spangled Banner, the flag he was looking at actually had 15 stripes. It was quickly recognized, though, that adding a new stripe every time a state joined the Union would get out of hand. Today, if this policy were still in place, the modern flag would have 50 stripes on it. Obviously, not a sound design decision. Thankfully, in 1818, Congress passed an act restricting the number of stars back to 13. The year 1876 marked our nation's 100th birthday, and in commemoration, the centennial flag was created. This flag replaced the rows of columns of stars with a pattern reading 1776 and 1876. This new celebratory flag was widely used, though it did not formally replace the existing design. In 1912, President William Howard Taft issued an executive order definitively setting the proportions of the flag and its arrangement. President Eisenhower followed this up with an order in 1959 which called for nine horizontal rows of stars and 11 vertical rows of stars. Our flag changed for the final time in 1960 with the addition of a star for the new state of Hawaii. 
There are certain guidelines we are asked to abide by when we fly the flag on our flagpoles. Unless your flag is specially designated as an all-weather flag, it shouldn't be flown during storms, snow, and other inclement weather conditions. If you wish to fly your flag at night, make sure it is properly lit. This can be easily done by placing lights under the flagpole and pointing them upwards, or by placing a light at the top of the flagpole itself. We are especially encouraged to fly the American flag on federal holidays and the birthdays of noteworthy Americans, such as Abraham Lincoln, George Washington, and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Here is a complete list of days on which we are given special encouragement to fly the flag. When the flag is flying from your porch, place the blue field at the top of the mast and hang it at the angle shown. When putting a the flag on your wall, the field of blue should remain in the upper left corner. If you want to fly the flag from your car or truck, secure it to the right front fender. The flag is often used for parades and processions. In these cases, the flag should either be on the marching right or at the front of the line. When displayed in a group of other flags, the flag should be in the center. It is not uncommon to see two types of flags fly on the same pole. If one of these flags is the American flag, it should be flown at the top above the others. And finally, when crossing the flag with another flag, like say on a campaign pin, make sure the American flag is on the left. If there is something below where the flag is flying, the two should never touch, and the flag should never touch the ground under any circumstance. The flag is, on occasion, flown only halfway up the pole. This is called flying the flag at half staff or at half mast. This is most common on Memorial Day, when the flag flies at half mast during the morning hours in memory of our nation's fallen heroes, in the afternoon when it is raised to the top of the pole, and then taken down at dusk. The other main occasion when the flag is flown at half mast is during times of national mourning, which are declared by the sitting president. Flags at federal buildings, on naval ships, and on other government grounds fly at half staff for 30 days after the death of a president or former president. Federal institutions also fly their flags at half staff after the death of a vice president, member of Congress, chief justice, former chief justice, or territorial leader. When displaying a flag at half staff, first raise the flag all the way up the pole, then lower it to the halfway position. When storing the flag, it is best to fold it. To fold the flag, start by holding it straight and tight with one person on each side. Then, fold it in half lengthwise. Fold it again so that the field of blue is showing. Next, fold the left striped corner to the right edge. Fold the newly made triangle into the edge. And repeat the folding process until you are left with a blue star covered triangle. Unfortunately, flags do not last forever. When our flags have flown their last, ceremonies called flag retirements exist so that we can put their faded colors to rest. According to the United States Flag Code 36, 176, Section K, the flag, when it is in such a condition that it is no longer a fitting emblem for display, should be destroyed in a dignified way, preferably by burning. If a flag is torn, dirty beyond the scope of cleaning, or its colors are no longer vibrant, it is then not in a condition appropriate for flying and should be retired. As the code specifies, the preferred and optimal method for retirement is burning. However, in circumstances where the flag cannot be burned, it is also acceptable to cut it. To do this, cut each of the stripes and sever them from the blue field. The blue field itself is never cut as a reminder that the states may never be divided. After the stripes are cut, the fabric ceases to be an American flag and may be buried. In a typical retirement ceremony, reverent words will be read about the flag. These may be from poems, famous speeches, or simply made up to fit the occasion. After the reading, the flag will be lifted up and unfolded. The attendants will then say the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag one last time. After the pledge concludes, 
The flag will be folded up into a rectangular shape and placed gently on the fire. In some ceremonies, the melody of taps will be played on a bugle as the flag burns. After the flag has burned completely to ash, the ashes should be collected and either scattered around the area of the burning or buried. If you prefer not to retire your flags yourself, a great number of organizations frequently retire flags and will most likely be incredibly accommodating. The VFW, American Legion, Girl Scouts of America, and Scouts BSA are among those institutions able to be sought out for flag retirements. To end my presentation, I am honored to be able to show you a model flag retirement ceremony performed by my Boy Scout troop, Troop 438. The ceremony took place at our troop's campsite, Camp Runamuck. It is also our troop's custom to leave flag retirements in silence. The United States flag code says, the flag, when it is in such a condition that it is no longer a fitting symbol for display, should be destroyed in a dignified way, preferably by burning. We are here today to honor the symbol of our country and to attire a flag which has served its useful life as a symbol of freedom and of our country. I am your flag. I was born on June 14th, 1777. I am more than just a piece of cloth shaped into a colorful design. I am the silent sentinel of freedom for the greatest sovereign nation on earth. I am the inspiration for which American patriots give their lives and fortunes. I am the emblem of the United States of America. I have led your sons into battle from Valley Forge to Vietnam. I was present at the Civil War, two world wars, Vietnam and the wars in the Gulf. I was there when George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, John F. Kennedy, and Neil Armstrong, and I'm here with you now. I have flown through peace and war, through strife and prosperity, and through it all, I have always been respected. My red stripes symbolize the blood spilled in defense of this glorious nation. My white stripes, the burning tears shed by Americans who lost their sons and daughters in battle. My blue field represents God's heaven under which I fly, and my stars clustered together unified the 50 states as one nation for God and country. I am old glory and I proudly wave on high. Honor me, respect me, and defend me with your lives. Never let our enemies tear me down from my lofty position, lest I never return. Keep alight the fires of patriotism. Strive earnestly for the spirit of democracy and keep me always as a symbol of freedom, liberty, and peace in our country. When it comes the time when I am old and faded, do not let me fly in disrepair. Rather retire me from my duties only to replace me with a new flag so that I may continue to symbolize our great country. With this, renew your commitment to what I stand for and pledge your allegiance to me one final time. Scouts present the colors. Scouts salute. We will now recite the Pledge of Allegiance to this flag one last time. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Two. As you can see, this banner of freedom before you was worn, tattered, and soiled from use and age. Her broad stripes are no longer red and pure white, but are faded and worn out. The stars and blue background are no longer vivid reminders of our blue sky and great land, of the purity, vigilance, and justice they should represent. She has flown proudly over the years and has done her job well, but now she must be replaced with a new flag to properly represent this great nation of ours. Scout, 
retire the colors. Scout salute. Thomas, thank you so much. That was fantastic. I, I always enjoy and learn something from our programs, but I have to admit, I did not know how little I knew about the flag. Um, unfortunately, our flag is not uh, talked about very often. And e even there, I was not able to do it the justice it deserved and only um, with the time constraint that I had. Um, I would encourage everyone here to learn more about our flag. It has a very rich and a detailed history. Um, every little thing about it means something special. And so I would just, um, I would encourage everyone to take care of our flag and to respect our flag for that reason. And um, as I said in the video, um, the Scouts BSA organization frequently does flag retirements. Um, as part of my Eagle project, uh, the museum has graciously agreed to have a flag box from our troop, which we will build, and that will be coming either late June or early July. Uh, so it will be on the museum steps, and you can drop your flags off there for us to retire. We have uh, retired very many flags, and uh, we would be happy to retire yours. So thank you very much. And I think what's great is having this box out on the, the museum steps. You know, the museum is currently open Friday, Saturday, Sunday, but we're going to leave it out the whole time. Um, and, and Thomas and his group will be coming and periodically picking them up. Um, Thomas, I know that you actually, um, and I think y'all will love this, Thomas is actually about to head to a scout meeting tonight. Uh, I hope you hold your head up high because you've done an incredible job. Um, but I wanted to learn a little bit more from you. I know that you have poured yourself into studying about the flag, studying about Flag Day. Was there anything that really surprised you that you came across that you you just 
didn't know before and really made an impact on you? Um, yes, ma'am, there actually was uh, one thing. Um, obviously, everything about the flag was very interesting to me, and there was a lot that I learned. But um, the, the Betsy Ross controversy, I, I was simply not aware that it existed. It was very strange to me to learn because this name Francis Hopkinson came up again and again in the reading that I did. And when I looked into it, um, there are some, uh, it happened so long ago that it's obviously shrouded in some mystery, but um, there are some historians that actually give the credit to, um, to Congressman Hopkinson instead of uh, Betsy Ross. I am not nearly expert an expert in the field. And so I will not claim to know you know, who truly designed the flag. Um, that's why I said some historians, because that, that's what I read. But that was, um, it was very surprising to me. Uh, the Grand Union flag is also very interesting. Um, it, it, it is a combination of the Union Jack and the 13 stripes, which is thought to maybe be, um, the 13 stripes are thought to maybe be taken from the flag of the Sons of Liberty. Oh. But, uh, yeah, um, not, I can't, that that's to, that's a theory, and the and I think it was just indicative of the fact that our um, Declaration of Independence had not been signed yet, and so there was still this this link that some people felt to England, when which was expressed through the Union Jack in the corner of the Grand Union flag. Well, and it's interesting how you said the Continental Congress was it never truly did any sort of official ratification of it. Um, and I wonder how much of that did influence this. You know, they were still kind of trying to work out the rest of the country. It, maybe this just wasn't on their radar or they were too busy. Or like you said, there could still be some divided sentiments. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, the Declaration of Independence was a last resort. Um, mm -hmm. Truly, um, a lot of our founders were very proud British, British citizens before, before the... Um, the intolerable acts of the Townsend Acts and all of those things pushed them away. Uh, George Washington famously started the uh, Seven Years War while fighting in the British military. <laughs> um, there's a joke that he started that, which then caused the taxes and he became president, the first president. So there's a joke that he started the Seven Years War to become our first president, which is <laughs> obviously far-fetched, but, but, but still quite funny. Um, and and uh, so, so yeah, that there was um there was still a large amount of British sentiment, and of course there even if it wasn't particular sympathy for England itself, uh, there was a great fear that should we lose the war, there would be a lot of uh, hangings and a lot of um, punishments exacted on the colonies for the um, rebellion. Oh, absolutely, and I think people people don't realize, um, you know. The, the fear that must have been happening because you're going up against what was the world's superpower at the time. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. So something else that surprised me, I knew just sort of in the back of my mind, yes, the flag has not always looked this way. I had no idea there were so many changes and progressions. And this is just a personal question for you. Do you think it'll ever change again? I would be shocked if it, um, I would be shocked if it, if it doesn't, I mean, it's obviously not changed nearly as much um, as it has in the past, because it would just to be expected, you know, our nation has gotten older and the rules have gotten more established. And, yeah. you know, t as time has gone on, things have kind of settled down a little bit. Um, but um, I do believe that there will be more states added to the union. And uh, with that comes more flag, more uh, stars for the flag. And yeah. I'm very glad that we don't have a policy of adding stripes to our flag for each state anymore. Uh, the the flag in the video with the 15 stars actually was the was the actual flag that Francis Scott Key looked at while writing the um, Star Spangled Banner. Um, and the flag in the painting of Francis Scott Key actually, interestingly enough, also had 15 stars. So the artist paid a, attention to detail, which was something very interesting that um that I noticed, but I'm very glad that with the stripes nowadays, we have representation of the 13 colonies.
because it, it is easy to forget sometimes how our nation got started. And I think that the 13 stripes are a very good memory of that. Well, and I like that we have, you know, the memory of the original 13 colonies right next to then, you know, the 50 current states. I think that's quite nice that you have them side by side. So you're seeing the past through to the present. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And so I will, if anybody has any other questions, pop them in the chat box if you'd like. Um, but I know that you have to get off soon, Thomas. Um, and I would let, like to let everybody know, as I said, this session is being recorded. It will go on our YouTube channel because your presentation, I just have to say, it was succinct. It was a perfect amount of time, the facts you put in there. I feel like I wish I had seen that in my American history class because it was it was so targeted. And so if you all ever want to share this video with anybody that you think is interested or, you know, the younger generation, um, feel free to, to grab it off of YouTube because I think Thomas did a great job putting it together. Um, so we'll take any more questions and people are loving. They had a great time and people, so many people have learned. So I had no idea, uh, especially the rules, the amount of rules. And I thought it really interesting how you said it has to be on the right front side of a car. I, I didn't realize that. And now I'm thinking back to parades and I'm like, it always has been on the, on, oh, here's a question. Are there flag, is, are there ways that the flag cannot or should not be used? Because we're hearing a, a lot of rules about what should be done. Are there any rules about what should not be done? Um, uh, first of all, uh, thank you for everyone for coming in. I am, uh, I am the positive messages in the chat have made me happy. Um, uh, I would like to quickly thank my uh, brother, Isom Allen, who is a patrol leader in our troop as well. So he's a very high ranking member of our troop. And he's actually the one who did the editing of the video. Uh, I wrote, I did the research and uh, wrote the scripts, but he edited the images together and he did a wonderful job doing it. Um, uh, as we answer to, the, to your question, uh, Ms. Christine, I, um, I, I do not purport to be an expert on the flag, but just any way that could be irreverent to the flag, I would I would avoid um, using it that way. Um, we've obviously all seen the uh, Star Spangled hat designs. We've seen the um, Star Spangled, you know, golf clubs maybe. And so there are a lot of, there's a lot of American flag themed um, memorabilia. Um, but there is a, uh, if it is a disrespectful to the flag or b if it fly if it shows the flag being flown in a way that is not protocol i would i would generally avoid it um but we are a uh, free country and so you know we are able to use our emblem for a lot of things um i apologize that i couldn't give you really any specific circumstances but i have um oh. but i have um i would encourage you to if if you are um incredibly you know concerned about flying your flag the wrong way the american legion the govern the united states government our state government uh the veterans of foreign wars they all have very detailed um uh websites and uh, documents dedicated to the use of the flag so i would encourage you to um to look those up i i know i certainly did for the research of the of the presentation um k Oh, yes. Yeah. So it looks like Kay Singer wasn't able to uh, come on early enough, but she said she's looking forward to rewatching the video. Um, oh, using the flag as a distress signal. Have you come across anything about this? Um, I've heard about it brief. I, I have heard about it. Um, yeah. Yes. Um, I, what I've heard is that if you uh, fly the flag, that sometimes it is it is um the flag is used as a distress signal and to do that you fly the flag upside down uh on naval oh. vessels um once again I, i'm not an expert but um i have heard about i have heard about cases like that where the flag is flown upside down as a distress signal that's fascinating it's almost like a little bit of code 
as well, right? You're, you're not giving yourself away necessarily, but if you're trained to know that other naval vessels may say, okay, this is something we have to investigate. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank you so much. This has been absolutely fantastic. Um, I know you say you're, you're not an expert, uh, but you are certainly a, a repository of a lot of knowledge of this. And I'm so excited to see, uh, you know, first of all, for us to host this box, uh, to see how the rest of your Eagle Scout project turns out, and also to see what else you can uncover. If you continue researching this and looking into it, it would be fantastic uh, to, to see what you can do in the future with this information. So thank you again, Thomas. Uh, so again, please note the flag retirement box will soon be installed here on the porch of the Orange County Historical Museum. And once more, we wanna thank our friends and our sponsors for their support. And we would also love you to join us as an official friend of the Orange County Historical Museum. Uh, you will receive a recording of this event within the next few days. And if you're interested in attending our other events or visiting the museum, please go to www.orangehistorync.org. And the museum and Thomas Allen wish every one of you a happy Flag Day. Um, uh, Miss Day, there I have a private question from Christine Little. Would you mind if I answer that? Absolutely, go for Sorry, it. Sorry, I, I didn't want to touch you. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so guidance for the care and use of the US flag presented to the family of a deceased military veteran. Oh. Um, I mean, obviously the flag code may provide you with some guidance on that, um, but obviously that is a very large, category of federal regulations and um, guidelines. Um, I wouldn't, uh, I would think that the American Legion might have something on that. Um, I, I am sorry that I didn't have the, the answer for that. Um, but um, it is definitely out there. And I wouldn't, uh, I would encourage you, I, if you would uh, like to rewatch the, the video and obviously not the whole thing, it's very long, but I did list some sources there. Uh, that may be helpful to you in that capacity. Well, and I like that you did that because it means that people now have their own resources to go to for these questions um, and if they want to learn more. And because everybody is going to have sort of these individual and different situations where they're saying, you know, I don't want to be disrespectful. I want to do the right thing. I don't quite know how. And I know you've mentioned the American Legion a couple of times. It sounds like they, they are definitely a good bet for learning more. Yes, ma'am. Excellent. Well, thank you again. Thank you to your brother for the fantastic editing. Um, I hope you have a wonderful scout meeting tonight and I hope you guys have a great flag, flag day. Thank you. I hope all of you have a great flag day as well. Thank you and have a wonderful evening.